Welcome to the Center for Independent Studies YouTube channel. My name is Benjamin Herskovich and I'm a policy analyst here at the CIS. Today I'm going to talk to you about my recent report, Australia's Asia Literacy Non-Problem. In this report, I look at the debate about the adequacy of Australia's Asia Literacy. We see commentators, academics and politicians arguing that Australia has inadequate Asia Literacy the argument is that we need more Australians to be learning Asian languages and to become culturally aware when it comes to Asia. By looking at the demographics of language policy, I find that this, what you might call Asia literacy alarmism, is largely facade and no substance. I look at both the spread of English throughout the world and the prominence of Asian languages in Australia. On the first point, we see that there are approximately 2 billion speakers of English around the world. This in effect means that English is unrivaled as a world language. English even trumps Mandarin's 1.1 billion speakers by a very wide margin. Not only is English prominent throughout the world, and in fact used in many fields as a lingua franca, English plays a very important role in Asia. Asia has something in the order of 800 million English speakers, which means that there are more English speakers in Asia than the entire Anglosphere. That is, the parts of the world where English is the language of the majority. Added to this, we see that English has a very important status in many crucial Asian countries. English is an official language in extremely important economic and military powers in Asia like India and dynamic commercial hubs like Singapore. All of this demographic evidence from around the world shows us that the Asian century will in fact be an English speaking century. Moving to the domestic arena, if we analyze the 2011 census data, it becomes clear that Australia has a very large pool of what you might call ready-made Asia literacy. In 2011, there were approximately 2.2 million people in Australia who spoke Asian languages at home. Within this data, we see important Asian languages, including Cantonese, Mandarin, Hindi and Punjabi, very well represented. This very large pool of Australia's age literacy is only set to expand as the years pass. If we look at the immigration program, we see that Australia is increasingly sourcing its immigrants from Asian countries. In the 2011-12 immigration program, seven of the top 10 source countries were from Asia. The story is even more positive than that even though, because the census data is a good proxy of Asian cultural literacy. The census data measures the number of people who speak various different languages at home. And insofar as we have 2.2 million people who speak Asian languages at home in Australia, this all me also means that there will be a very large number of people who in all likelihood have some kind of familial connection with an Asian culture. All of this suggests that Australia does not need to be concerned about its level of Asia literacy because there is a very large pool of people in Australia who speak Asian languages owing to Australia's multicultural composition. Looking therefore at the demographic evidence on the global scale and in Australia, we see that Australia is well placed to prosper in the Asian century because of the worldwide prevalence of English and because of the high profile of Asian languages in Australia. If you would like to find out more, just go to the CIS website and you can read the report in its entirety. That is cis.org.au. Thank you very much.